Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen, to Unite Clash, brought to you by Victory Road. And this is number 11, you guys, also with our partners, GG Tour, Kanashi. What are we looking at? You told us just before the break, and this is going to be a game they don't want to miss, right? Yeah, this is going to be a really good matchup. Um, we know that after the regionals, a lot of teams shuffled up. Um, it's more of like, you know, it's an off-season kind of for them. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe even trying to figure out what uh, teams could work for them. And yeah, we have a great match between Love D's and Lucker Bunch. So two two L teams. It's gonna be great. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Love D's once again, Sneaky Seal, Zugrug, Indie Bear, uh, Toon, and Kyrios, who we've seen on a whole bunch of like you know top tier teams, mostly you know GG. Um, and then Lucker Bunch is Sanji, Superior, Arg, Feppy, and Lakoding. So um, another team that you know is pretty stacked, stacked up yeah. uh, moving forward. So. Um, looking forward to a lot of these really great games and uh, seeing where, uh, you know, where both these teams can end up lying and what kind of, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of lineups can we see moving forward. Of course. And we wanted to say hi to Anime Lou over there in the chat. You know, somebody who's viewed, I feel like, every victory road, you know. So we just really appreciate you being a regular. And that goes, of course, for anybody in our chat who watches all of these. We really appreciate it, you guys. And so... You got your Lucker Bunch over there on the purple squad, and then you got Love D's there on the orange. We're gonna be looking at those roster picks early. Check marks there for the left side. Yeah, just going ahead and locking these in, making sure that they're ready to go. Uh, Sanji, this time gonna be picking up that Absol. Um, definitely been seeing that being picked up uh, a lot more often. We have Lakoding, um, and then Feppy and Draperior. Or we're trying to figure out what Arg is gonna end up playing here. Um, Meanwhile, for the side of, uh, for the side of Love D's, they're just trying to figure out what specific role they want to put Tune on. Has been kind of that X factor in what to deal with. And Sneaky Seal also playing a game of roulette, just kind of making us panic a little bit. But uh, it is going to be a really interesting lineup. We do see both the Cramorant and an Espeon moving forward, and Zogrug picking out that new. Uh, that new Hollowware that we just got dropped, yeah. so it's going to be really cool to see um, how these teams are going to end up playing against each other here. What do we call it? You know, is it our knight in Shining Snorlax or something? But yeah, it's uh, very, very cool with like a chain mail, you know, I guess. Right, Kanashi? Am I getting this accurate? I, I believe so. It's, it's, it's a chain <laughs> mail of some sort. It might be like kind of a, a sumo callback. I don't, I'm not ah, there you go. sure, um, but we'll see how it ends up playing. I mean... Uh, hopefully it will give them the upper hand moving <laughs> forward, but yeah. um, we'll see, you know, the this matchup, this other semifinal side between Lucker Bunch and Love D's is just about to get started, and uh, Sneaky Seal this time is actually going to be playing in the jungle trying to get a little bit of experience going their way. That's right, early pressure right here for that Audino, it's typical, but we're obviously at 9.30, there's not going to be, you know, any drops just quite yet. Sometimes it happens, but not super often, but that Cramorant maybe looking to rotate up here. Yeah, we're going to see that from Love D's there on our minimap, and of course, early on uh, with some of these dunks right here from Lucario. So, all looking mostly standard, you know, we're very, very close, and like we say, it's only a minute in approximately, but there we go. That's going to be one of the early drops, Sneaky Seal doing absolutely work on that name because that was a rather sneaky maneuver you're going to come in with that cramorant and actually pull off that lucario ko looking nice and then there it goes it's not without punishment sanji going to be jumping in there with that absol yeah trading out the lucarios real quick just giving that experience to the mid laner kind of important uh moving forward but both love d's and lucker bunch uh definitely teams that have uh have players who have played against each other a lot so we'll see if they end up finding anything in particular curious trying to survive this three on one opportunity CE seal dropping dangerously low and it's not going to be the case Sanji uh taking it personally now tune trying to survive maybe being another little push and pressure here but uh instead they are going to go ahead and rotate down and end up winning down on this bottom lane as well uh but overall you know uh lucker bunch just applying a lot of pressure up to top lane uh, and Love D's just trying to take control of bottom as the uh, as the trade-off here. You can see in tune really with these nicely timed Psy shocks, I would say, from that Espeon. So it's looking pretty good. 
Uh, we're hoping to see this Espeon do some work, and there it is. There's that work that I was just trying to talk about. So wonderfully timed. Often that's a commentator's curse, but this time I think it was the commentator's blessing, and that's sometimes what you're talking about. You can be blessed with it actually transpiring exactly how you say. So anyway, we're going to see Zugrug right now trying to contest for that Audino right here. We'll get the slam, though, along with the Espeon. Once again, we're just kind of side shocking out of nowhere, so this is all looking really nice. You get a rest in. Maybe this Espeon can save you. Toon, it is looking, though, like it's not... Not really in Zugrug's favor, the Scald. That damage over time just chipping away. And so nice job back and forth, both of these teams. Yeah, they're just applying pressure about 30 seconds out until the first objective as well. We'll see if the two teams are gonna start rotating down here. It might be rotating a couple of people up to top. Go ahead and get that B experience before they go ahead and head back down. That's what we'll be looking for. So we just got about 12 seconds for it, but notice there's just drops all over the place. So there's another KO, of course, against Zugrug, and that's not an easy KO to do. So you're taking down your, you know, a pretty big tank, of course, in Snorlax, but also it's Zug. Zug knows how to play it. We all know that. And so here we go. We got the Dreadnought coming up. So are we going to see all hands on deck? There is just slightly uh, a skirmish, I would say, and like a different strategies going on on the top path. You know, we don't have a Hoopa there to teleport us just quite yet. So yeah, it'll be just kind of that manual old school method where you actually use your legs and walk, right? If you're that Lucario, but no actually kind of opting to go off to the side. So just as we have all the action here in this team fight, which is exploding, by the way, we are seeing the action there for the central area. And it will possibly be the thing that could cause them because obviously you don't have all hands on deck and that Lucario can be really helpful during that team fight. So it is actually gonna go to Lucker Bunch who can make that push. And it's a major push, Kanashi, with all these 30s, 20 pluses, you know, going in to make this score gap a lot wider for Lucker Bunch. Yeah, and they're going to leave that front goal with four as well, just uh, trying to look for a way to break over it as well. Uh, it's a very important little strategy that they're trying to implement here. Um, but yeah, the game is really tough to go ahead and push forward in here. And hopefully they could uh, allow the teams to apply the pressure that they need to. Uh, if anything, Love D's just needs to you know, play it slower, find a couple picks, you utilizing Sneaky Seal and the damage and spacing that it could create, and uh, utilizing that in order to get some more objectives. So uh, we'll see if that is the case moving forward. Here we go. Sanji's looking to just try to go for these openings, right? You know, you're this stacked Absol and looking pretty good at level 11, but at least not too far off is going to be, you know, Sneaky Seal. We're going to see, I think that's Curios right there as our Orange Lucario for Love D's. And so... And again, it's like at least we're not too far off against uh, an Absol that can typically snowball. But hey, Sanji's been devastating, been trying to look for those openings and take them. And so uh, obviously proven to be pretty well in this mid-game right now with Lucker Bunch being at 174 to Love D's on that 59. Again, mid-game, five-minute mark just about to hit right here in this match. Yeah, the five-minute mark, we're going to go ahead and see that timer. Um, and they're going to go ahead and get a notice of, you know, they have a huge lead. So Lucker Bunch is taking advantage of that, having that level of pressure and kind of setting the tone uh, for the series overall. Sanji really snowballing already at level 13 here in this game. And just so much damage moving forward, trying to look for a way to burst down the rest of it and just cap out early, get get that pressure up and not allow Love D's to even potentially come back in this match. We're gonna see Toon just continuously trying to attack from afar with that Espeon, but you notice what's happening up close, right? Zugrug's getting in your face with the blocks, sending everybody on over, but notice the pick. It was actually taking out the Espeon behind enemy lines. Slowbro will fall after that, but nice KO and nice pick from Lucker Bunch. It's just, is this gonna be the right one? It's gonna be who's gonna get that dread, who's gonna have more drops, and it really is anybody's dread at this point because you're seeing just that knockdown drag out fight all over the map. There it goes. Sanji actually gonna turn this around very, very nicely done because you're gonna see bringing everybody back over to their, uh, to the allies and then kind of having that muscle then, not just with the Absol, but also you've got your allies, like I said, right there. So nice push, nice strategy here. Dreadnaw once again, kind of regenerating that life back and then just getting kind of poked a little bit. And then we have those hyperspace holes to bring everyone back and then back on into the fight. Zug sticking out in the front as the tank should. Toon dropping really low and there it goes again. Second time in this dread fight. Yeah, and the dread fight is still kind of going on. Uh, they're they're yeah. waiting on Love D's to officially drop so that they could start this out. But yeah, overall, like a lot of really good plays coming out from Lucker Bunch. Really good coordination. Uh, one of the things that you gotta that I'm gonna point out here in the middle of that fight, in middle of I believe the the last one, 
um, the Espeon Toon ended up using uh, their Unite move to try to isolate out and uh, KO the uh, KO the Absol, but it was a really good heads up play by Drapirier to go ahead and drop a safeguard on them so that they, they aren't caught in that entire engagement. And that allowed them to escape, come back, get a little bit of healing and continue on with the fight. So really good heads up play by, by the entirety of Lucker Bunch here. Definitely so. And we want to thank Hell Raising Gaming there in our chat for throwing down those bits. We really appreciate that here at Victory Road BGC. This is the Unite Clash number 11, you guys. Turn up that intensity because we got to see if Love D's can actually kind of make this push. And the last little bit of time, we're going to be at that final stretch very soon. But you notice that the Rotom is now going to go for Lucker Bunch and then Zug is going to drop. So again, just a lot of devastating plays. A lot of these micro, but I mean, we kind of have the macro sense on lockdown too if you're Lucker Bunch because you're seeing that those T1 goals, they're down on both pathways. Just been a lot of map control, a lot of pressure in the right places. So again, that micro and macro all going, uh, I would say, in the favor of Lucker Bunch. But you know what? It ain't over till the zap sings, I guess you could say, because here it is, Kanashi, that final stretch. Yeah, so the Zapdos is up at the moment. They are going to be able to head out Love D's trying to regroup and recuperate from the initial push that Love D's is applying to them right now. And now we'll see if that is going to be the case. They are chipping away here, trying to keep that damage up. But no, it's just going to get bursted down right now by Lucker Bunch. And they're going to go ahead and open up the wound. You just see how much damage they're coming through with, with, with Feppy and just zoning out everybody at the moment. They do get a little bit of a dunk here. Kyrgios is going to be able to dunk a quick 50, but what, what's a what's a hundo to a six hundo? Not not much. So overall, really good games and playing coming out from the rest of the team. They are finally going to bring down Sanji, but uh, we'll see if that is going to be enough to go ahead and give them the space that they need in order to win the game. Hundo Duncan all around from Lucker Bunch. There it is. Unite runs on Hundo Duncan, so... Uh, I think that that's what we're going to see. I mean, at least we're hearing what a goal is still being shot out here. The Psychic Solaire down on these wild Pokemon. It looks like Toon Slim just trying to say, well, we don't want anybody getting a few more points here. Not that, I mean, you're looking at a 45 seconds on this match. So it's like, uh, do they know how devastating the score is at this moment? Well, I'm sure they at least have some concept of it. So there it is. The opposing team is going to surrender. I think that's the main indicator right there, right? So... The GGs, the FFs, whatever double letters you want to give, I guess, in the chat right now because we are seeing that that score breakdown is just moments away. And this Victory Road Unite Clash number 11 here, Lucker Bunch going to be the team to win that with a final score of 773 to 261 there for Love These. Yeah, and, and you see, you know, Lucker Bunch having a lot of pressure. They, they applied the pressure early, Sanji getting those levels quick and really not letting their foot off the gas. And um, Love D's had the right idea, you know, maybe play from distance, maybe utilize the cram ramp, but still not a lot of spacing and a lot of damage that they could do in order to stop Sanji in those moments. So um, high damage really working out for Locker Bunch and they're gonna t be taking game one. All right, so Anime Lou being like 600 to 100. Yeah, that was the earlier call, but it's looking pretty devastating. I mean, Lucker Bunch, he did a really good job, but let's see what the damage looks like. When you see that 76k there on the Absol, it looks nice, but notice on the flip side, Toon with that 81k on that Espeon. It's looking good all around. Yeah, they they have the damage. It's just converting those into into mm -hmm. uh, KOs, you know? Um, if they happen to get those KOs going their way, um, Love D's would probably be in a better position, but it's really tough when you don't have an immediate answer to the not only the uh not only the absol but also the lucario as well oh definitely right i mean we saw a lot of those drops and it really was sort of at a lot of stages of the match but definitely during the mid game and it was like mid to late game you know we saw it zug dropped a few times there where it could have been a little bit more crucial let's say um so when you're looking at things like that you gotta obviously be shaking in your boots a little bit i guess if you love these but Certainly, you know, just get your head in the game here in this game too and try to figure out how can we stop it. So some of it was the Absol, but really I think it was all the players there for um, their team is Lucker Bunch. I was just about to get the LUs, you know, and these names confused once again, but no, it's Lucker Bunch, love these. All right, so again, Lucker Bunch kind of had support from all sides. So it wasn't that it was just one person kind of stomping and 
making the majority of your goals. It was everybody team effort. So very nice, very nice. Um, get Nashi, obvious question. What do you think? What does it have to be? I mean, what do they have to adjust? Maybe make a roster change? I don't know. I mean, Toon Slim on the Espeon seemed like it was good. It's just obviously dropping during some of the crucial moments as well. So that, that, is, a, that is one question of it, I guess, one component. Yeah, it's uh, how do you deal with, once again, the Absol? If it has to be, you know, the Garchomp once again with the rough skin uh, mm -hmm. could be an option. But I do think that, like, that is the main thing that, that really held them down was the fact that Celestial was starting to get into level 13 as the rest of Love D's is barely approaching 10. Um, it's just, you know, that snowball potential that they have. And that works out quite well for them. So now it's just a matter of, uh, will Love D's make that transition, make that change uh, in order to push this to a game three? Or if is Lucker Bunch going to go ahead and face off against uh, Maine Wolves on the other side of the bracket? Um, only time will tell. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> there's still a lot of time to really figure out what strat you want to go ahead and utilize. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll see if that is the case uh, moving into game number two. Right. Um, you did notice, actually, or if you didn't notice, just want to point out that lick holding there as that uh, Lucario, and that was for Lucker Bunch, getting in a massive amount of points last game, too. And so some of that was the final stretch, of course. But you can't count out, of course, that while we have our Absol here just making work, you know, devastating, mowing the lawn, you could say, with everybody. But that Lucario also is a force to be reckoned with, and that's just kind of always been the case in Unite. So now, you know, we're just kind of, I guess, adding more uh, fuel to the fire, you know, when you have both Absol and Lucario out of control. But Kanashi, what are we seeing over here? We got the tree. So, you know, I'd like to introduce everybody to my friend tree, of course, Trevenant there with Zugrub. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting battle. They said, hey, we're, we're a little squishy on the uh, <laughs> on the damage front. What if we just go two all rounders instead? Sneaky Seal hovering over the Eldegoss as well. If we do, it is locked in. Uh, so there Eldegoss and Indie Bear. Um, this is going to be a really interesting lineup. I, I did not think that we would see this coming out. I'm assuming Toon is probably going to go mid, and uh, Curios is probably going to try to get their levels as quickly as possible. I don't know where you put each person, but uh, if this is the case, uh, sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I see the attack, the X attack on Eldegoss. Does that mean we're getting the, the infamous jungling... Uh, the juggling oh Eldegoss? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> oh boy, Eldegoss more like a flower that will grow in the jungle over there. But anyway, uh, you know, Sneaky Seal, I'm very interested. You know I love Eldegoss. We might be calling it the Murder Goss, you know, with that X attack. And that's a phrase I used to say, but then thought I should back off of it. But hey, you got an X attack. So we are looking at actually a 2-1-2 two, two there for Love Ds. So they are going to be running Sneaky Seal up top here with Curios as that uh, Garchomp player, currently a Gibble, of course. But Med by Le Coding going to be actually the Machop. So, uh, interestingly enough, I was noting the Lucario, but hey, we're switching to Machop right here. And uh, I'm all here for it, okay? So we want to see this shake up and what it's going to do. Yeah, they're going to try to figure out how they want to play this out. Um, just getting the levels is going to be really important, especially against uh, Absol and Lucker Bunch in general. So um, we'll see if that is the case moving forward. Love D is just playing it nice and slow trying to get whatever whatever farm they can and uh, whatever damage they happen to get through as well. That's absolutely right. And so we are going to see some of these early drops. Look at that. There's going to be our Eldegoss player who is currently still stuck in that Gossifleur land. Notice, though, the battle here to bring down Sanji is going to be successful for Toon. Obviously, you're going to see a few more dunks right here and the evolution with the coding. Going to be our little, our uh, big Machoke, I guess. It's not little Machoke. But anyway, actually going to drop down. So ultimately being met by bigger numbers here, of course, because we do have the three on one and it was about to be three on two. Feppy also being brought down by that same principle. Just can't quite get a break if you're Lucker Bunch right there, but at least ahead on score, only by 20 though. So we are still very early on, and this was a crucial bring takedown of that. Oh, and there goes the Gabite dropping as well, and Lucker Bunch, uh, Lakoding just applying more pressure to this goal as well. Um, I do think that this is an interesting like prioritization overall. It's just like, uh, I kind of expected you know, the Dragonite to be here, um, not like at this moment, but like mm -hmm. have a lot more pressure moving into either a top or bottom lane. Um, 
they are there. I, I just don't know if there is enough push coming out from the rest of the team or enough levels uh, mm -hmm. to go around and be comfortable enough by level or by the nine minute or the seven minute mark um, to be ready to go ahead and take um, take Dreadnought in a comfortable fashion. So I would like everybody to know as a disclaimer, you know, obviously as commentators, we have to uh, maybe toe the line between opinions and facts or, you know, and things like this. But I guess what I'm going to say is this opinion will come from somebody who loves Eldegoss, possibly my favorite Pokemon Unite character to use, okay? So when I say that, but Sneaky Seal, man, I mean, we're seeing a lot of these drops from Eldegoss right here, and sometimes it's at the crucial points. And so I'm just kind of hoping that Eldegoss was the pick, but it is questionable at this point. You know, and again, we're looking at a little bit more opinion maybe than fact, of course, but hey, this is just some observations. As we have that Dreadnought, it's coming down here. That's going to be the team fight taking place before it launches, but there it is. We're actually going to see a miss, swing and a miss right there, right? Because we had the hyperspace hole to bring uh, all the players away from Sanji right there, who will actually Midnight Slash kind of on a mad tear afterwards. Yeah, trying to go for more of the damage and taking out this, the side of Love D's rather than focusing specifically on the Dreadnought. Win the fight first, get the Dread second, and they're now focusing their efforts on Indy, who's dropping really low, and yeah, that is going to go ahead and take out the first one. I don't know if this was the right answer as well. I, I do agree. Um, they, they have tankier damage, but there's not enough, you know, there's not enough resources on the map for them to really take advantage of it. Um, Curios trying to get whatever they can, pushing their teammates back into the entire fight, but it's not going to be enough. You already see the leveling from Lucker Bunch, like starting to get a little bit ahead. And, you know, once again, the, the Absol already level 11. Um, and it's, it's really tough when the rest of the team doesn't even have their ultimates or have their Unite moves ready. That's right, because when we see Indy at level 7, you know, that's a little bit rare, of course, but we're almost talking about double, you know, when you see an Absol at level 11, so you're right to point those things out, but right here, Zugrug trying to just get whatever motions we can, because you're going to take the wild Pokemon, but also maybe do some damage and try to defend here, but you see the numbers, and you see, obviously, they've got the Rotom, so all these things, oh, okay, they didn't have the Rotom, I'm so sorry, folks. I'm just uh, not being the most observant, am I? But anyway, the Rotom was in question, and that was the thing, was if they had the Rotom, you could obviously even push through, because Rotom is going to attack the players at a base level. So believe it or not, you know, that can be a little bit scary sometimes if you're dropping down that low. But ultimately, it looks like we kind of have that situation where you, you wait on the Rotom until the time is right, you've baited out the other players from Love D's, and then you've got that Rotom right at the last second. So... Lucker Bunch, for the most part, kind of playing that, I think, under control. Now, it's like messy control, right? You know, if that makes sense. So, like, there were a few messy points here and there, but ultimately looking solid for Lucker Bunch here as we hit that 445 on the clock. Yeah, and they are trying to get in position for the second Dreadnought. Get ready for this and uh, potentially bring that down. But once again, Lucker Bunch just taking advantage of that top lane just eating up as much space as possible and not really giving them anything cotton cloud crash also coming down followed by the phantom force uh the forest in order to go ahead and give a little bit more hp regen but it's not enough as we already see a lot of the players dropping low they are going to go ahead and grab up one and now zugrug very little hp uses the curse going to get shredded up as well they do pop the dragon's rage just trying to get whatever damage they can on the coating and trying to look for the burst they happen to get one but at the cost of the dragonite as well trying to look for sanji but they already have the safeguard on them not gonna get cc not gonna get that damage through so overall lucker bunch still trying to take it and they are gonna go ahead and secure it now giving them the experience lead and starting to snowball out of control we are actually, I wanted to point out that we're seeing quite the display also from Slowbro, you know, sort of the unsung hero of that team fight. We had the Scalds in just from behind. It was like you weren't really expecting to get hit by Scald, you know, if you were members of Love D. So it was just Slowbro making the moves throughout all of that. And then you just use that amnesia, forget all that damage that happened to you, keep staying in this fight and keep scalding people down. Now, speaking of that slow bro, unfortunately for them, gonna be falling actually from a massive KO streak. Yes, Toon gonna be picking off that four right here. And that's gonna allow Love D's to get right back in this game in just a matter of about 10 to 15 seconds. 
looking wonderful. And so now you have a little bit more momentum. Make the push. But of course, Machamp looking to stop that. That's Lakoting right here. And Sneaky Seal dropping so low. And that will be it. And then Machamp finally brought down. So it is now, once again, we are playing a game of Pong. We are back and forth, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are. And right before final stretch as well. This is a very good time to try to catch up, take the lead, uh, take whatever... Uh, you possibly can, especially yep. right now. Um, we know a lot of these teams have to play into each other and figure out a way how to play around each other, but you have about 30 seconds to really figure out how you guys want to take this final fight and how you want to apply the pressure here. And so there it is, pressure abound, and it looks like it's actually going to go for Love D's. It kind of did look like it might have been in favor of Lucker Bunch, but Love D's putting up the fight. So. There's the Midnight Slash. Of course, Sanji looking very nice, but obviously dipping very low as well. And so you have the advantage of the Unite. You have your speed. You've got your power. And right now, it's just a matter of there you go. You're going to go ahead and TP back when the time is right. So that was well executed, though, leaving us set for the Zap fight with the Rings Unbound. Can now teleport in just in the nick of time. Look at that sneaky seal being a sneaky seal. Dropping into 66 with our Eldegoss right here. Our resident Eldegoss is going to try to help um, change the tides. But Lucker Bunch will be the ones here in the final stretch to pick up the Zapdos and then fall. And notice, of course, who is the lone member? No, Love these now. An entire team wipe. Lucker Bunch is going to bring them down. And so we have the moment, folks, for the Hundo Duncans. Pokemon Unite runs on Hundos. And there they go. So Lucker Bunch bringing this to a much different game here in this stage of the match. We just got about a minute 20. Kanashi, can they do anything to come back or is Love these out of there? I, I feel like Love D's needs to find a way in. They they couldn't find it the last couple games. They don't really have the pressure or the presence to go ahead and take a fight like immediately. So it's going to be a, definitely an uphill battle. You see Sneaky Seal with eight. Just maybe trying to get a quick score in. We'll see if that is the case as they start moving on into this game. Um, we do see the rest of Lucker Bunch go ahead and rotate up to this top goal, trying to already look for somebody here. They already brought down two, three, four already, and now it's just going to leave Portune Slim all on his own, and he's going to get beat up by everybody on Lucker Bunch as well. It's going to be another 30 seconds before they are, before this game is officially over. Lucker Bunch is going to be taking this uh, two to zero um, if they continue on with the pressure and love these just couldn't find the the right pick to go forward and uh move on in the tournament yeah even sanju says i'm gonna go ahead and drop in another hundo duncan why not we're eating good today folks got our coffees in hand too so it's uh you know a lucker bunch looks like you're gonna take it and definitely you know not without trying from love d's but this certainly showed you the power of when these rosters kind of shake up and we get players like this i mean there were no bad players on either team. It's just the fact that Lucker Bunch, you're so stacked, and that Absol just putting in work, of course, too. So all these elements combined really paint the picture for this game, which, of course, resulted in a final score of 520 right here for Lucker Bunch to 270 for Love D.